the Saddle College. College is represented by You are most welcome gentlemen. How are you this time? All right, I was provided some information about you. This is your sixth appearance at the grand finale. You are back to the finals after a two-year break. And you are hoping for your second trophy. Good. You are also the Central Regional Champions. OK. This must be great. And I see that you have a lot of support behind you. Any shout outs? All right. What does a, a win mean to you? What will a win mean to you? Okay, so if you get a second trophy, will you write another book? Hopefully. <laughs> okay, <laughs> best wishes to you. Thank you. Let it be. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School.
Unitarian Boys Secondary School is represented by Alfred Kenny on final year. And in St. Ryan Jones, final year. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. And how are you? We are blessed and highly pleased. Great. Now, something about you that I have been given. This is Presec's 11th appearance at the grand finale. And you have six trophies already. You hold on to that very dearly. Is that so? OK, good. So you have also equaled at the Saddell College record of four successive final appearances. And you are the current Greater Accra Regional Champions. Yes? OK. Now, after missing out on the trophy last year, you Christian gentlemen are back in the finals to make a seven. I heard a whole lot of sevens coming from the crowd, right? Okay. First, let me ask you, anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uh, we want to thank all the old boys and all our parents and all the coordinators for their immense help they have given to us. Without them, we wouldn't have made it this far. All right. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And now the win. What will a win mean to you? To us as Prisicans, a win is everything. We trust in God and we believe that indeed God will give us the victory. And at the end of the day, we shall be celebrating the seven. Thank you. <laughs> I wish you well. Champions Prempe College. Represented by Hassan Yunus. Al Hassan Yunus. Sefabwa Jiyad of Lionel. Okay. 
How are you, gentlemen? Bless and highly favored. Great. Well, this is the grand finale. And I have some things about you. This is your seventh appearance at the grand finale. to show for it. Good. You are defending champions and you are hoping to get a sex trophy today. All right. Uh, this is because you want to equal somebody's record. <laughs> eh? <laughs> All right. And you also want to try for the back to back. Not easy but possible, right? Okay, good. So, anyone you like to shout out to we would like to say a big shout out to the old boys. Especially the rest of for helping us to get this far. Okay. okay. That's nice. All right. What will a win mean to you? A win means a lot to us. And since we are the dependent champions, winning will mean with equal presex back to back and also presex six trophies. All right. In that case, I wish you well. Thank you, madam. I hope that's all right. Okay, so this will require 10 seconds of your time, no bonus. All right, so now the question, the question. In recent years, the concept of green and sustainable chemistry has emerged as an important approach to reducing the negative impacts of chemical processes on the environment and health. Give one, only one major principle or approach of green sustainable chemistry. First choice, Prempe College. Lionel? Polymerase chain reaction. That's incorrect. I'm moving on. Presbyterian boys, your turn. Yes, Alfred. Planting more trees and plants which can be harnessed to produce very beneficial products such as drugs and um, clothes and medicine. I'm not accepting it. <laughs> Yes, Prince. Recy Recycling of waste product. Recycling of waste product. That is... That is... Uh, I'm not accepting that either. Okay. Gentlemen and everyone else listening, the concept of green or sustainable chemistry, the major principles and approaches, many of them, so listen carefully. Prevent waste or pollution. Use less hazardous chemicals or use benign solvents and processes. Use energy efficient processes efficient synthetic processes or atom economy that means minimize the use of atoms all right use renewable feedstock produce degradable or biodegradable products design or produce safer chemicals and use relevant catalysts for reaction efficiency you see yeah we need to do these things for sustainability, and it is our basic sciences that will help us to do that. Next set, 10 seconds. Premper College. With regard to lung ventilation, what does dead space refer to? You know us. So, dead space refers to the part of the respiratory system which do not function in either expiration or inspiration. That's incorrect for a bonus. Ah, uh, 
Okay, so it refers to air that is inhaled into the airways but does not reach the alveoli and hence is ex exhaled again without participation in gaseous exchange. Or another way of putting it is the volume of air that is inhaled that does not take part in gaseous exchange because it remains in the pipes, the conducting airways or pipes, and reaches, or it may even reach alveoli, but those are not perfused or they are poorly perfused. All right. Presbyterian boys, why is it that bronchioles can constrict for the diameter to reduce, but the secondary bronchi cannot constrict? Yes, Alfred. This is because bronchioles, right? Yeah. Bronchioles have um, cartilages and they are surrounded by smooth muscles. And these cartilages and smooth muscles enable uh, them to contract and hence constrict. But these smooth muscles and uh, cartilages are absent in bronchioles uh, and secondary bronchioles. And this um, prevents them from being able to constrict. I'm not accepting it for bonus. All right, you are a little confused. So bronchioles are the ones that have smooth muscle, muscle, but they do not have cartilage, they don't, okay? Whereas the secondary bronchi, they are supported by cartilage. So because of the smooth muscle, the bronchioles are able to constrict. <laughs> At the Saddell College, Patients with diabetes mellitus who refuse insulin therapy rapidly metabolize lipids, which leads to an accumulation of the acidic byproducts of lipid metabolism in the blood. What effect would this have on respiration? Yes, Abdul Wadud. Due to, the, due to the rapid lipid metabolism, the, the lungs of the, of the patient get constricted by these lipids, and these lipids clog up the respiratory pathway, making breathing in and breathing out difficult, and this would reduce the efficiency of respiration. I'm not accepting it for a bonus. Yeah. All right. So the simple answer is this. The simple answer is that there will be an increase in the respiratory rate. Okay, so I'm sure you've heard about diabetic ketoacidosis, right? You've heard about it. Okay, so this is the situation that happens when they refuse uh, insulin therapy. So the respiratory rate will increase if blood pH decreases in order for them to breathe out carbon dioxide and hence reduce the acid. So in uncontrolled diabetics, this is known as hyperventilation. It actually has a specific name, cosmal breathing. So labored breathing, right? Uh -huh, very difficult. So you increase the respiratory rate to try and get rid of the CO2. Uh -huh, that's what happens. All right, next set, 10 seconds each. And I have a short preamble to all schools. Preamble. When I get to your school, I will mention an iconic experiment. Okay? So let me know the evidence the given experiment provides. I hope you got the preamble. No response means yes. Prempe College. The Stern Gerlach experiment. Lanel. The 
This experiment provides evidence about the relationship between temperature and the electrical conductivity of a certain material. That's incorrect. <laughs> yes. The, the Stern Galak experiment like, provides, evidence. provides evidence on the quantization of angular momentum. I will Presbyterian boys with the same preamble, the Davison Gemma experiment. Yes, Alfred. This experiment uh, verified the wave nature of the electron and hence helped to show um, that electrons also can behave as waves. Yes. question with the same preamble at the Sadal College. The geiger Marsden experiment. Yes, and Prince? It provides the evidence that it, it, it determined the discovery of the neutron. That is, it is the center, the central portion of the atom. And the mass is, all the mass of the atom is concentrated on the nucleus. Okay, I'll accept that. Next set, 30 seconds. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment PQ given the points P and Q. Simplify your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Did you get your preamble? Okay, great. My key word is simplify. All right, so Premier College. P has coordinates negative four, two, and Q has coordinates two, negative six. Yes, Lionel. Four. Yes, yes. Y plus five minus three X is equal to zero. I'm not accepting it. <laughs> yes, Thanks. Prince. Go ahead. Three X minus four Y. Minus five equals zero. That's right. With the same preamble, Presbyterian boys. P has coordinates two negative two and Q has coordinates negative two four okay. 
Alfred. Zoom. We have. Let me see my Three y minus two x minus three is equal to zero. That's incorrect. Yes. Two x minus three y plus three is equal to zero. That's right. coordinates 3 negative 4 and Q has coordinates 5 negative 2 Okay, so the equation is x plus y plus 6 equals 0. That's incorrect. Yes, Eunice. x plus y minus 1 equals 0. That's right. with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. The following conversion takes place in two steps. You will be given the starting material and the reagents and conditions for the two steps. Give the systematic name of the major product formed at the end of the two steps. Did again? All right. Please listen carefully. The following conversion takes place in two steps. You will be given the starting material and the reagents and conditions for the two steps. Please give the systematic name of the major product formed at the end of the two steps. All right, so now, Premier College, the starting material is ethyl benzene. For step one, you have alkaline potassium permanganate solution with heat. And then for step two, dilute hydrochloric acid. Yes, Lanel. Phenyl methanoic acid. That's incorrect for a bonus. The right answer is benzoic acid. Presbyterian boys with the same preamble. Your starting material is butane. For step one, Bromine with heat. For step two, dilute sodium hydroxide. Alfred? Are you sure? To form one, bromobutene. That's incorrect for a bonus. The right answer is 2-butanol. At the saddle with the same preamble, your starting material is cyclopentanol. For step one, sulfuric acid with heat. Step two, hydrogen with palladium.
Abdul Wadud. Cyclo Pentin. You are right. <laughs> Set 10 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble. A matron was preparing dough for making bread for senior high school students. She added a pinch of yeast and sugar to the dough and left it in the warm place. After a few hours, the dough had risen. There was a smell of fermentation too. I hope you got your preamble. Again, all right. A matron was preparing dough for making bread for senior high school students. She added a pinch of yeast and sugar to the dough and left it in a warm place. After a few hours, the dough had risen, and there was a smell of fermentation too. That's the preamble. Now, Prempe College. Why was there a smell of fermentation? Yes, Yunus. The yeast, <coughs> the yeast a dago ferment. The yeast. Uh, ferment the sugar to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide and this ethanol will bring the scent of fermentation yes <laughs> with the same preamble Why was a pinch of sugar added to the dough? Ten Krinus, your hand up. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so then sugar was added so that it will serve as a substrate for the enzymes enzyme present in the yeast to act on it so that it will produce the ethanol and carbon dioxide. Mm, no. For a bonus. So the sugar was added to the dough to provide nutrients for the yeast to grow and multiply. Mm. For the growth and multiplication of the yeast. Addis Adele, with the same preamble. What would have happened if the dough was kept in a refrigerator soon after it was prepared? Abdul Wadud. If the dough was to be kept in the refrigerator, the activities of the yeast and the enzyme in the bread would be reduced since enzymes are proteins and they are deactivated at low temperatures. Also, the yeast is an organism which thrives in a warm place, so the low temperature would not be suitable for the activities of the yeast to cause the breakdown or the fermentation of the bread. Okay. <laughs> So you see a whole lot of science even in the bakery. Yes. If you want dough to rise, you need some sugar to act as nutrient for the yeast and then keep it at the right temperature for activities to happen. And then when the alcohol is produced, that's when you smell the fermentation. A lot of science, right? Yes. All right, next set, 10 seconds. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Name the trajectory of a charged particle in the given situation. 
Did you get your preamble? Good. Premper College. A charged particle initially at rest in a region where both an electric field and a magnetic field parallel to the electric field exist. Yes, Eunice? Straight line. You're right. <laughs> with the same preamble. A charged particle in a region where an electric field and a magnetic field parallel to the electric field both exist, and the initial velocity of the particle is perpendicular to the fields. Yes, Tenkran. Circular motion. No. For a bonus. Yes, Lionel. Helical motion. I'm not accepting that. Okay. So it's a helix. It's a helix of constant radius but increasing pitch. With the same preamble at this adult. A charged particle initially at rest in a region where both an electric field and a magnetic field perpendicular to the electric field exist. Yes, Prince? A parabola. No. For a bonus. It's a cycloid, a cycloid. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools, preamble. Find the greatest value as well as the least value of the trigonometric expression. I hope you got it. Good. All right, so Premper College. Sine squared of x plus 8 multiplying sine x plus 8. Yes, Lionel. The greatest value is positive 17, and the least value is 1. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble. Cosine squared of x plus 6 multiplying cosine of x plus 10. Yes, Tenkran. The greatest value is 17 and the least value is 5. You are right. <laughs> Adele. Sine squared of x minus 4 multiplied by sine of x plus 7. Prince. The greatest is 4, and the minimum is 12. That's incorrect. Yes, go ahead. Just 12, minimum 4. 
Yes, Tunkran. The greatest value is 12, and the least value is 4. Yes. Your question. 16 grams of copper 2 oxide reacts with 0 0.90 grams of carbon to produce copper and carbon dioxide. Which reactant is in excess and by how much in grams? Molar mass of copper is 64 grams per mole. Yes, Lanel. The copper two oxide is in excess, and it is in excess by zero point seven five grams. One. Yes, the copper oxide is in excess, but it's 4.0 gram. Presbyterian boys, 33.6 gram of iron reacts with 9.60 gram of oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. Which reactant is in excess and by how much in grams? Molar mass of iron is 56.0 gram per mole. Yes, Alfred. So, if you use it, it so the iron is in excess and it is and it is in excess by 11.2 gram yes <laughs> at the Sadao college Eighteen point zero gram of magnesium reacts with sixty four point eight gram of hydrobromic acid to form magnesium bromide and hydrogen. Which reactant is in excess and by how much in grams? Molar mass of magnesium is twenty four point zero gram per mole. Yes, Abdul Wadud. Magnesium is in excess. Okay. So the excess reagent is magnesium and it is in excess by by two two point three grams. One. Yes, it's magnesium, but it's by 8.40 gram. Next set, 10 seconds. Premier College, a plaque in a coronary vessel wall 
results in a decrease in the lumen diameter of a coronary artery. Explain why this results in less oxygen being delivered to the heart muscle. Yes, Yunus. Oxygen to the heart. The plaque reduces the lumen diameter of the artery. And since the coronary artery transports blood to the heart, to the walls of the heart, when this plaque clots the diameter, the lumen diameter of the artery, the amount of oxygen that will be able to reach the heart become reduced. Since the plaque will interfere with the flow of blood containing dissolved oxygen to the heart. One. You spent much of the time telling me things I already knew, right? Okay, so this one we are using Poiseuille's law, right? Poiseuille's law, the volume flow rate. So I needed you to tell me that there's going to be a decrease in the volume flow rate and that is the reason why, okay? So fourth power, Poiseuille's law, go and look it up. All right. Presbyterian boys, what does the term cardiac output mean? Yes, Alfred. Cardiac output refers to the total amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart during a cycle of a heartbeat, and it is equal to the the product of the stroke volume of the heart and the, the heart rate, that is the heart beat, and hence the cardiac output depends on the stroke volume and the heart beat of the heart. Two. the heart pumps through the circulatory system in a minute it is related to the time okay I didn't hear time coming from you so per minute thank you Addis Adele <laughs> when a nurse is taking a person's blood pressure She's actually measuring the difference between the total pressure and which other pressure? Abdul Wadud. The total pressure and the diastolic pressure. That's incorrect. Yes. Go ahead, Yunus. The total pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Yes. blood pressure is actually the gauge pressure, right? Uh -huh. It's the gauge pressure. Okay. Next uh, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble to all schools. A two meter slender rod of mass 2.4 kilogram is pivoted at one end on a smooth horizontal surface and is initially at rest. A 0.2 kilogram object of negligible extent moving at five meter per second perpendicular to the rod strikes the free end of the rod and becomes attached to that end. Please, did you get your prayer more? One more time. A two meter slender rod of mass 2.4 kilogram is pivoted at one end on a smooth horizontal surface and is initially at rest. A 0.2 kilogram object of negligible extent 
moving at five meter per second perpendicular to the rod strikes the free end of the rod and becomes attached to that end. Now, Premper College, find the angular frequency with which the rod begins to rotate about the pivot. Lionel? Zero point three radians per second. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> the right answer is zero point five radians per second. Presbyterian boys, with the same preamble, determine the magnitude of the impulse of the reaction at the pivot. We said two newtons. Ten grand. Two newtons seconds. That's incorrect. For bonus. The right answer is 0 0.4 Newton second. With the same preamble at the Saddle College, find the change in total kinetic energy in the collision between the incoming object and the stationary rod. Two point five Jews. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> the right answer is negative two Jew. Last set of questions in the round. Thirty seconds with a short preamble. Preamble. Solve the equation for x. That's all. All right, your equation, Premper College. x raised to the power log of x is equal to 100x. Lionel? X is equal to 1 on 10, or X is equal to 100. You are right. x raised to the power 2 log x is equal to 10x. Alfred. So, x is equal to 10 or 10 raised to the power negative 1 over 2. Okay. With the 
same preamble. X raised to the power three log X is equal to 100 X. Prince? X is equal to 10, or X is equal to 10 to the power... Negative 2. 10 to the power negative 2. Huh. 2. The right answer. X is equal to 10, that's the part you got right, or X is equal to cube root of 10 over 10. And that's the end of the first round. Round two. is also known as the speed race. The questions in the round are directed to all three schools at the same time. For an opportunity to answer a question, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Prempe College? Thank you. Yours, Presbyterian Boys. Thank you. And yours, at the Sadao College. Thank you. If you ring an answer correctly, first attempt, three points. Second attempt, two points. Third attempt, one point. But be mindful that if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, meaning your answer is incorrect, or you do not provide an answer within a reasonable time, you lose a precious point. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations, you have 10 seconds to do so. Best wishes, everyone. First set of questions, 30 seconds each. First one. Solve for x from the equation. Cube root of the expression 2x minus 4, this expression squared, is equal to 4. Yes, Alfred. X is such that x is equal to 6, or x is equal to negative 1. That's incorrect. Who rang next? Okay, go ahead. X such that x is equal to 6 or x is equal to negative 2. Yes. of the point A, the point A, the coordinates X, Y. If it's image under the linear transformation, T such that X, Y maps on to, to X minus 2Y, X plus 2Y is 3, negative 1. Yes, Alfred. So the coordinate of x is given by the point that's for the x value is one. 1 and its y value is ne negative, negative one. 1. Yes. <laughs> Next 
next one. Find the coordinates of the point of inflection of the curve. Y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Yes, quickly, Alfred. The coordinate is 1, comma, negative 1. Yes. Next set, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. frequency at which maximum intensity occurs in the frequency spectrum for a black body whose temperature is 8.0 times 10 raised to the power 3. They made it. Okay, go ahead. Eight point three by ten to the power fourteen heads. That's incorrect. The right answer is four point seven times ten raised to the power fourteen heads. Next one. Object is dropped from rest 196 meter above ground. 2.0 seconds later, another object is dropped from the same height. Find the initial speed of the second object. All right, Alfred, go quick. So the initial speed is 98 meter per second. That's incorrect. Did two objects hit the ground at the same time. Twenty-four meter per second. Next one. All right, for this one, you should listen carefully. That's advice for you. Two particles mutually interact via a force whose potential is given by you. Okay, so now this is you. I have an expression with two terms. So listen carefully. B over R, this raised to the power 8, minus the second term is 2 multiplying the expression B over R. The expression B over R raised to the power 4. And all of this multiplied by A, where A and B are constants and R is the separation between the particles. Please find the equilibrium separation between the particles and the potential energy at equilibrium.
The separation R is equal to B, and the potential energy at equilibrium U is equal to negative A. Last set, 30 seconds. No, no, not yet. La not yet last set. Second, I have a few more to go. But um, 30 seconds each for this set. 30 seconds each. All right. At 850 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant of the decomposition of hydrogen iodide according to the reaction 2HI going reversibly to H2 plus I2 is 1.0 times 10 raised to the power negative 2. Given that the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen gas is 0 0.30 mole per decimeter cubed, calculate the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide. Yes, Alfred, go. The equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide is three point zero mu per dm cube. You're right. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Four hundred and thirty two milligram of a metal M reacts completely with 60 centimeter cubed of 0 0.18 mole per decimeter cubed of an acid A. Given that the equation of reaction is M plus A goes to MA, identify the metal M. M is calcium. All right, next one. Given the following data, first a reaction: two C two H two gas plus five O two gas going to four C O two gas plus 2H2O liquid, delta H is equal to, delta H naught is equal to negative 2,600 kilojoule. C solid plus O2 gas going to CO2 gas, delta H naught equals negative 395 kilojoule. 2H2 gas plus O2 gas going to 2H2O liquid. Delta H naught is equal to negative 570 kilojoule. Please calculate the standard enthalpy. All right, go ahead. Yes, Alfred. The standard enthalpy is positive 450 kilojoule. Per move. That's incorrect. Did anyone else ring? Okay, I continue. The standard enthalpy of formation of ethane from the data. Yes, Lionel? Positive 225 kilojoule per mole. Yes.
Now we are on the last set. Ten seconds each. Ten seconds. mucosal barrier between the cells of the stomach wall and the stomach contents. Yes. Yes, Abdul Wadud. The purpose of the mucosal barrier is to prevent the action of HCL secreted by the by the stomach, the glands in the stomach from acting and breaking down the walls of the stomach. So this mucosal wall prevents the HCL secreted by the gastric glands from acting directly on the stomach walls and then breaking down the stomach, the walls of the stomach. Since HCL is acidic and we, if not... Did someone else ring? Yes, go ahead. So the mucosa layer prevents the HCL secreted by the gastric gland to react with the walls of the stomach in order to prevent stomach ulcer. No one else. Okay. Uh, of course, you're not wrong. I mean, you told me similar things. But it's not just the HCL, right? There's also pepsin. You know that enzyme pepsin? That can also cause damage to epithelial cells in the stomach. So it's not just the ACL. You know the questions in the speed race, they have to be perfect, right? Uh -huh. So HCL and enzymes like pepsin from acting on the epithelial cells. By the way, this is what will cause you to have stomach problems if you don't uh, have an intact mucosal barrier. Okay, next one. Why are flocks? important in biological treatment of wastewater. Oh, flux, F-L-O-C-S, flux. Okay, what they do is that they digest most of the organic material from the sludge. Okay, this helps to reduce the BOD, biochemical oxygen de demand of the effluent. So, I hope you know what flux are. No? Okay, flux are masses of bacteria associated with fungal filaments to form a mesh-like structure, and they are used to clean up wastewater. So, you learned something today, right? Great. Last one. Why is insulin not given as an oral? Yes. Insulin is not given as an oral drug, but injected. And this is because the insulin is composed of protein. And since the insulin is a protein, when it is given orally, it will be digested by the enzymes. That is the enzymes which digest the proteins will digest the insulin to its, in, its component amino acids. Hence, the insulin will not be able to function, that is, to not be able to perform its action when it is taken orally, because... Yeah. That's the end of the second round. Good. All right, so now the problem of the day. This is a single question to all three schools. From the time I ask you to begin, you have four minutes to present an answer on the screen behind you. As mentioned, the problem of the day is worth 10 points. Contestants, you may please stand. And drop your pens, no pen. We are going to turn over the sheets and read the problem of the day together. Just reading, okay? Problem of the day. Sulfur 
is commonly used in creams, lotions, and ointments to treat skin diseases, including acne, scabies, psoriasis, and eczema. A student wishes to prepare a water-soluble topical ointment from 10 milligrams each of the following sparingly soluble salts. Silver 1 sulfide, copper 2 sulfide, and bismuth 3 sulfide with respective solubility products of 3.2 times 10 raised to the power negative 50, 1.00 times 10 raised to the power negative 46, and 1.08 times 10 raised to the power negative 73. Which of the salts would you recommend for use given a focus on sulfur only. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may now begin. Now, contestants, at this adult college. Silver, no balanced equation in sight, but you do go through the process to get the right answer, two points. Copper, the copper compound, no balanced equation in sight, you have the right uh, solubility at the end of it, two points. Bismuth, no balanced equation. I'm giving you one point for the process. You didn't get to the right final answer. But you did conclude that we should go with the bismuth. For that reason, I will add one more point, giving you six out of 10. <laughs> Presbyterian boys. equation, right calculation of solubility, two points. Copper compound, yes, you have, you have the balanced equation and you have the right calculation, three points there. When it got to the bismuth, no balanced equation. Oh, you did have a balanced equation. I, I didn't give you anything because, in fact, I, you started dealing with a different compound that I didn't recognize. You had boron instead of bismuth, just B. So I didn't even recognize it. Anyway, I'm giving you one point for process, okay? So that gives you, and then you couldn't do the rest. I mean, the rest, you didn't have the right thing. And then the conclusion, because of the nature of the compound you have there, that's not the compound we have in our problem. And so I couldn't give you the final mark. So you also wind up with six out of 10. <laughs> Prempe College. Um, for the silver compound, yes. You have a balanced equation, you have the right calculation, three points. The copper compound, your balanced equation is not dealing with ions. You are dealing with <laughs> elements. Uh, so I'm not giving you for the balanced equation. By your calculation, you get two points for that. Uh, I didn't see an equation for the best moth. No, it was not a good one. Uh -huh. But you have for the process, I'm giving you the point for the process. Uh, final answer was not right. Mm -hmm. 
it wasn't. And yes, you did conclude that we should go with the bismuth compound, and so I'm giving you one more point. That gives you seven out of 10. That's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round three. you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider it carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case that statement is available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, the two four points. If not, there's a penalty, one point. All the best. Premier College. The term clone cannot be applied to offspring found by sexual reproduction because DNA of only one parent is copied and passed on to the offspring. Yes, Yunus? False. You're right. <laughs> the term clone cannot be applied to offspring formed by sexual reproduction because the offspring are formed at different times. Yes, Alfred. False. Yes. The term clone cannot be applied to offspring formed by sexual reproduction because DNA of parents and offspring are completely different. Yes, Prince? False. Yes. Palmitic acid is a major constituent of palm oil and is an unsaturated long chain fatty acid. Yes, Eunice? False. Yes. <laughs> Oleic acid is a major constituent of groundnut oil and is a mono unsaturated fatty acid. Yes, Alfred? True. Yes. Lauric acid 
is a major fatty acid in coconut oil and is a saturated fatty acid. Prince? True. Yes. For the next set, I have a preamble to all stools. Preamble. Preamble. Two chords, A, B, and C, D, of a circle intersect at a point E inside the circle. That's a preamble. Again, two chords, A, B, and C, D, of a circle intersect at a point E inside the circle. Now, Premier College, A, B multiplied by E, C is equal to CD multiplied by DE. Eunice? False. Yes. <laughs> With the same preamble. AB multiplied by BE is equal to CD multiplied by CE. Yes, Tenkran. False. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble. AE multiplied by BE is equal to CE multiplied by DE. Prince? True. Yes. Next set, short preamble. Preamble to all schools. In the Millikan oil drop experiment, that's the preamble. I hope you got it. All right. Premier College. A bright light illuminates the region between the plate electrodes of the apparatus and charges the oil droplets by the photoelectric effect. Eunice? False. Yes. <laughs> the same preamble. The motion of a charged oil droplet in the region between the plate electrodes of the apparatus can be controlled by varying the electric field between the electrodes and thereby obtain zero net force in the presence of gravity and air buoyancy. Yes, Alfred? True. Yes. with the same preamble. The radius of an oil droplet is determined by measuring its terminal velocity as it falls with zero potential difference across the plate electrodes of the apparatus and using Stokes formula that relates aerodynamic drag to speed air viscosity and droplet radius. Prince? False. That's a true statement. It's a true statement. Premier College. Cross of nine is to three is to three is to one ratio denotes that the alleles of two genes are interacting with each other. Yes, Eunice. False. Yes. Of nine is to three 
means to three is to one ratio denotes that it is a multigenic inheritance. Alfred. Alfred. True. No. independently. Prince. True. Yes. Premper College. Industrial chemical process will produce a greater amount of product than an uncatalyzed process. Yes, Eunice. False. You're right. process will lead to the use of less energy compared to an uncatalyzed process. Yes, Alfred? True. Yes. industrial chemical process will always lead to the production of less waste product from the reaction compared to an uncatalyzed process. Prince? False. Yes. Of course, all this along the lines of sustainable chemistry. All right. Premper College. A squared minus B squared is a factor of A raised to the power 6 minus B raised to the power 6. Yes, Eunice? True. Yes. Preamble. 
radiation from various beta emitters are studied using a Wilson cloud chamber with a suitably oriented uniform magnetic field in the observation region. Again, radiation from various beta emitters are studied using a Wilson cloud chamber with a suitably oriented uniform magnetic field in the observation region. Pramper College, the trails of beta particles are observed as straight tracks. Eunice? True. No. minus particles are observed as circular tracks, but tracks for beta plus and beta minus particles curve in the opposite sense. Alfred? True. Yes. minus particles with the same energy have the same radius. Prince? True. Yes. And that's the end of the fourth round. If you solve three riddles at this stage, it's worth 3,200 Ghana CDs. If you solve all four riddles, you will get 4,000 Ghana CDs for your team. Best wishes. So obviously in this round, round five, we are going to be solving riddles. I will be reading out the clues. Your objective is to solve the riddle. For an opportunity to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Premper College? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Please, when you ring, your answer must be ready. I will not wait. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, three points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. Four riddles in all. Let's begin. I am a type of ligament. I have been given different names depending on the organ to which I am attached. In the duodenum, I am known as the ligament of trites. In the eyeball, I am known as Lockwood's ligament. In the lens of the eye, I am known as, yes. Suspensory ligament. You are right.
three points. Three points. Next one. I am a two-digit number. One digit is twice the other digit. The sum of my digits is a multiple of three. Yes. Prince. 36. No. 63. Oh, yes. ring? No. Okay. I'm a metal halide commonly used in cloud seeding. Yes. Alfred? Silver iodide. You are right. Yeah! I am a natural phenomenon. My manifestations are legion. I create the starry spikes in images of the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST. I brightly illuminate the very center of the geometric shadow of a circular disk. Were it not for me, no one would have heard of the Rayleigh Criterion, nor would it have been invented. And you would
could hardly hear the quiz mistress at this moment were it not for me. So who am I?